Hey folks, you're watching more Chaotic TV. We are bringing you the third place match from uh, Numerica Bowl. That's literally how you say it, Numerica Bowl. Uh, Millennium House Cup from mid-December. And we are watching a ZVP this time between these two players in the bottom left of Clown Kingdom in Game 1. We have the Pink Zerg playing 14 Evil Geniuses. He is Stefano. And I talked too much, so these players already had to introduce themselves. But anyway, in the top right, we have the Blue Pro Toss, the Boss Toss, Obama Toss, President Toss. He is SK Gaming's MC. And I am stoked to bring you this, because this is one of those awesome games. And I'm really looking forward to see what these two players bring us. This is a best of five, just like uh, the semifinals were, so we're going to be seeing at least three games from these players, and we will have to see who takes what when. This is EVP, and we saw the previously the ZVZ between Demaga and Stefano, and the PVT between MC and Marine King, and Demaga and Marine King are the winners of those matches, respectively, but these two players are winners in their own right, MC being probably the most uh, winningest earnings wise player and Stefano is the most winningest excuse me the winningest uh, non-Korean player of all time having over 200,000 near 300,000 dollars himself from France is what he's from now I might sound a little bit nasal but because I'm still fighting off a little bit of bronchitis but uh, I want to keep chunking out these videos for you guys so I hope you enjoy them as much as I do Stefano versus Demaga went for a lot of hatch first, and this time we're actually seeing him go spawning pool first, and he'll drop a 16 hatch, most likely right after this, and then go for um, a queen on his main hatchery right after he drops. There it is. There's the hatchery. And uh, there's the queen. So, MC went Nexus first after Pylon, and then Forge, of course. And Stefano sees it all, so he knows he's fine in taking a, a second hatchery, and he probably might even take a third hatchery, being as he is known to do that. Now we see the standard wall off from MC, and he is extremely well known for his timing pushes on two bases. But we have to wait until the cybernetic score comes out after this gateway finishes to see what tech path he's going to go, because he is a fan of the uh, Stargate, just like now Azubu Genius, formerly uh, Slayer's Genius, was a Stargate type fan. And um, then we do see the third hatch coming down from MC, excuse me, Stefano, right now. But here is the finished gateway, and he'll drop a, a cybernetic skull right here. This is also, this is like a secondary wall off. If he does get a Ling Lung by here, he can warp in a Zealot here and uh, back here just to ward off any like full ling run by scouting into his base or something like that. But when the cybernetic score finishes in another 25 in-game seconds, we're going to have to see what he does. As I mentioned, he does go for that Stargate play a lot, but we could also see him drop a Robo, go Observer, and then um, continue with a heavy gateway pressure, or go for a type of heavy late game Protoss type of play, where pretty much Protoss have a lot of choices, and, but they generally choose between going for a timing push or just waiting until they're completely maxed out. Zergs, a lot of time when they go three bases early, they always wait till they're maxed out, or they build a number of, a heavy number of roaches and try to snipe a third base and try to do kind of a soft contain on whatever opponent they're looking at. MC is not uh, chrono boosting his warp gate technology, so we're not going to see any kind of, um, excuse me, th and there's no robotics facility, so we're not going to see any warp prison play. We are seeing a Stargate that uh, MC is known for, and I'm sure Stefano, having played against MC numerous, numerous times in huge tournaments over the past three years, is kind of expecting the Stargate play. We don't see a, sec a second Stargate coming down from MC, which is, is something which you... He kind of, if he, if he were investing that much in a second Stargate, then it would kind of be an all-in. You can't really put that much money into Stargate play, especially with a lot of Phoenix, without uh, leaving yourself vulnerable at home. I mean, yes, you can keep continuing the wall-in, but if 
Stefano went for kind of a drop play as a retaliation, then MC would be in such a big trouble. But MC, though, putting a little pressure on, kind of with a, a scouting two stalker Zella that he um, Chrono boosted out, but we see 12 lanes coming in that'll clean this up very, very quickly and this queen will survive. And these slowlings are doing what they can. They're, they're trying to get some reinforcements because it's a long pathway for lings. As you can see, these four lings took another 20 seconds to get down here. And this zealot will not get the queen, but these two stalkers might try to, to micro their, their way in there and get it. But we will see MC lose this stalker most likely. Um, or they might even get away and back home before the Zergling speed even finishes on Stefano's side of it. But Stefano building up a number of roaches and Zerglings behind this just to ward off whatever you can. But they're not going to be any use against these um, Phoenix play, this Phoenix that are going to be seen. And I think those were seen by, on um, at least by those Zerglings and stuff, and this thing will die. But we do see spore crawlers dropping everywhere. So we see one in the, in the mineral line of each base which is kind of perfect placement for them all. The queen is hiding right next to the sport crawler, and uh, now these these phoenix are trying to pick off any number of overlords that they can. Stefano having already 91 of 118 supply, can just rebuild, uh, excuse me, overlords whenever he, he feels like it, but these phoenix will also not protect MC versus all of these roaches and lings. I mean, they can lift a couple of them, but it's not going to be such a huge deal. These force fields will protect them now. And the Roaches might try to snipe this forge, but they will take heavy casualties from these two cannons. So Stefano putting on a little bit of, of a contain, and we don't see the Hydralis then dropping that some players decide to go for out of when when fending off Phoenix. He's just going for the um, there's the Hydralis then, excuse me, and he's putting on gases five and six to help fund. Hydralisks because they are a very expensive unit, and these Phoenix are just continuing to wait for energy to lift up all these little, little creatures. Ooh, we see a Void Ray coming out for MC. He is continuing this Stargate play, but he is putting on a couple of gateways behind it and actually going into the Robotech. So we're going to see um, an Immortal come out, which will be great against all of these Roaches but will suffer to the Hydralisks if he if he gets three or four. Uh, immortals, then he, then Stefano well, might be in a big tr in a bit of big trouble. But MC is taking his third base now, and he might be building up for about a 160 push off of three bases, and an expansion behind that. Stefano taking his own fourth, which is pretty good timing for his Zerg, taking it at 11 minutes. And these Phoenix are still doing a bit of damage. Four kill on one, one, three. Stefano is completely supply popped right now. Hydra is coming out. If they don't have enough numbers, they might get picked up themselves against the air units. But this Void Ray will do what it can, and you see all of the Hydralisks getting picked up. And that's 150 resources, um, mineral, 100 minerals and 50 gas per against Stefano. So he's probably lost a whole lot, as you can see, compared to MC. MC not having lost anything but a Zealot in this entire game. Stefano has lost quite a bit, but MC has also not been able to put on any kind of severe damage. It's only on all of these mobile units. He's not killed any structures. He's not really kept Stefano from building his tech or anything like that. If he had gone early Void Rays or something like that, he might have been able to snipe a hatchery or kept Stefano from going for the Spire tech that he's about to go for, or even the uh, Hydralisk tech. He might have been able to ward that off, but this mostly gateway push right here with uh, 001 is going to do well for MC and it's 01 for Stefano right now. Both players going for that attack as opposed to the um, defense type setup. But uh, Stefano going for that ground carapace right now. He does have the, the double upgrade facilities whereas MC has only got the one. But he did move into this robotics tech. He he delayed it by going with the Stargate. He puts on a decent amount of harassment. It's kind of guaranteed harassment as opposed to going in with ground forces against the Zerg early on. When you go in with ground forces, they all have ground forces because Zerglings and Roaches are the primary units for an early Zerg defense. But if you go in with um, Phoenix or something like that, unless they build a huge amount of Spore Crawlers, which, or, yeah, Spore Crawlers, 
then the Zerg is pretty pretty unsafe. I mean, you can always pick off overlords like MC did, and then they have to wait until they're after layer tech to do any kind of mobile defense, like the Oso uh, expensive infestors or the Hydralisks that Stefano went with. But uh, as you can see, he's lost a, a huge number of those Hydralisks right when they were spawning, because you have to get a number of them before um, pretty much before they can attack air units safely without any support because Zerglings and Roaches don't support Hydralisks against air units. Now Stefano, I would really love him to see love to see him track around this top horseshoe, uh, which he is gonna do with a counterattack of wings, but MC is looking to take his own base. Stefano Max is trying to do some damage right here and, and sacrifice some of his his supply so that he can switch into this late game corruptor broodling or excuse me, corruptor broodlord um Infestor tech that we've got going here, but this layer has got to finish burrow before it can evolve into a hive. So he might cancel that, but he might not. These roaches are about to have these roaches and hives are about to have the two two that Stefano is looking for, and I don't exactly know where his spire is. There's his spire. He's waiting for at least level one research before he morphs it into a, a greater spire after the. I've finished but all these corruptors are going to be great against the Colossus. I guess the Colossus is why he built these corruptors to defend it off, but these Hydras off creep are not going to be doing any good. Stefano not electing to go with a high creep spread in this game, but now that he's on creep, he can do a little bit of maneuvering. The reinforcing roaches are now in play, but huge stalker blink uh, retargets all of the AI from Stefano. Stefano can lose his spare base and all of the drones that are here. The corruptors are circled around the back and they're going to start picking off these colossi one by one. <coughs> Excuse me. One by one by one. And MC is going to be in a bit of trouble if he can't find, figure out a way to stop the reinforcements of Stefano. Stefano still has the heavy supply lead coming in with 30 roaches. When they spawn, uh, MC is going to be in a bit of trouble, but it is going to take a little bit of time for Stefano's units to all group up there. If they attack MC piecemeal, like right as they spawn, then it, MC could just take all of his larger uh, group right now and attack. But since Stefano's coming in with all of these roaches and the force fields are pretty good, they're going to try to snipe off his immortal before it does any more damage. It's got 16 kills, 17 kills. Uh, the Colossi are gone, and the reinforcements of MC are simply gateway units because he doesn't have anything coming down the pipe. Right now he's got a single Colossus, but he spent all of his money on these gateway units, these sentries, and stalkers can be picked off if the creep was there, but it's actually not. So these force fields are great keeping Stefano's units back and actually being able to pick off the remainder of the most of them. But Stefano does have the heavier supply, is on a firm three bases, will probably just rebuild his next base very quickly. And he's going to keep MC from taking a fourth of his own. MC's base is mostly mined out. Stefano's is almost completely mined out. Both these players are doing very good at keeping all of their bases uh, evenly mi mined. Compa you know, comparatively, they both had 16 on each base at about the same time. Except for Stefano's or excuse me, MC's third, but he is a bit oversaturated here compared to Stefano's third, which is pretty much dead on. Stefano using all of his extra drones to do a little bit of long distance mining until that hatchery comes up. Now, Stefano has to come up against all of these units on the high ground. He has the corruptors for high ground vision, which is very, very helpful in this setup, but he's probably going to go for that third base as opposed to going for the natural at this point. He's just destroying these rocks because when he tries to fall back to this other high ground, he doesn't want to be choked off and have the Colossi of MC attacking him at one point. Now, MC's observer has seen everything that Stefano has moved around, and he actually have a forward pylon going to be placed by MC. He doesn't see, of course, that hatchery that will that uh, Stefano is going to look to drop, but he will when the drone comes in and drops it. The Stefano probably isn't even looking at that right now. Oh, he just saw that there's a probe there, most likely. And, uh, 
Actually, no. But we will see a forward pylon drop for MC right now. MC moving out on the map with a huge amount of Blink Stalkers and three Colossi. But the corrupt account for Stefano is at seven. So he's going to be able to pick off them once more. Stefano already moving to take down the fourth base of MC here. And Stefano building his own fifth base. This four of pylon is now in play. And it's going to be a great flanking maneuver of MC to put down stuff here and bring it in behind Stefano's army, forcing the AI to target backwards and forward at the same time, leaving it vulnerable to, to at least one side. The Corrupted move forward to try to take out these Colossi, which are in the front of the army. They're not being micro back. A little bit of a flank by Stefano. Oh, huge snipe off of all those Corruptors. And now Stefano moves in to take out the remaining Colossi. And the Blink Micro from MC is just so great against all of these Hydralisks. The, roach, the tanking Roaches are disappearing and all these low hit point Hydralisks are starting to die. The Corruptors move in a little bit to start taking a little bit of damage himself. But a big burrow uh, by Stefano to try to save all of his units. But there is an Observer on the map that will be taken out. The Hydralisks stand up with the, all the Stalkers Blink onto them and Stefano is way ahead in army supply because of all of his reinforcements, but right there at that point he wasn't doing so hot. Now MC is going to lose his fourth base, and Stefano is starting to choke out uh, MC simply by resource count. These Blink Stalkers are great against either one of these death units, but Stefano is going for pathogen right now. He's going to start switching into an, an investor tech with all of this extra gas he's got. It's a great choice. You need to be able to use your economy so efficiently, and it looks like Stefano's not going to be able to take out this board base before MC gets it up and running and gets some amount of pylon down, and he's going to be trying to protect it with all he's got. All these blink stalkers are starting to do a huge amount of damage because of MC's great blink micro, saving all of the units right as they start to lose their shields. You can see how many are in half or lower health because of MC's... Um, Blink Micro, he keeps all of them in play, essentially. Now there is no protection for M for Stefano's fourth base. The fifth base has been spotted. It has no mining yet uh, because he hasn't moved anything from his natural, but we do see a Spore Crawler headed down to this fifth base to spot pretty much invisible units. But MC is kind of really low on minerals right now. He's actually probably would be better for him to double expand and take that kind of risk, in my opinion. But he des deciding not to, continuing to spend all of his money on Blink Stalkers and trusting in his own micro that he would be able to save it. Now, he's not going for any kind of armor upgrade right now at this point. Only uh, This first armor upgrade is only going to be 100-100, but he's deciding not to since he's only on two effective bases mining-wise. Now, Stefano is on kind of two and a half, having a couple of extra mineral fields here and a couple here, but he himself is only on two bases, and he would probably do well to take a third as well, but he is higher in the supply right now, mm, kind of higher in the army supply. The roaches are at a low enough amount that it's not padding the army supply, but we do have broodlords coming in. This is going to be a huge boom to his army. The blink stalkers are going to be great against this, especially... Uh, with this pre-concave, but Stefano, if he's able to micro and get some great fungals off, he's going to be able to lock down all of those infectors. Excuse me, all of the uh, all of the blink stalkers. Now they they ran back because the over the observer that was there completely denied their high ground vision after it was lost, and the MC is going to have to run back to his home base to try to do a last ditch effort, pulling all his probes off his fourth base, he's going to lose it, and he's going to be down to a one mining base, and Stefano moving out, oh, there was a huge blink stalker attack at the fourth base of Stefano, and he lost his own, all these drones moving now to the fifth base of his uh, his remaining mining base, Stefano moving forward now pulls back all of his units to try to save his own base, as MC has gone for a bit of an all-in here, he has almost no more money for reinforcements against the Stefano army. Stefano has no money himself, but he, he can come in with these decent force fields, uh, very, excuse me, decent fungals, and very decent force fields from MC protecting all these units, but it is only a delaying tactic. Huge fungals go down on the center of that MC army, then 
compressors with no energy are just kind of hanging out. Big Fung was going down on the ramp. Stefano doing a big flank maneuver from all of these three boys. Three boys are going to be able to keep MC bit, um, Hardly from really getting away. He's going to be able to flank and cut him off around to this east part right here as MC tries to take the high ground and continue to run. He blinks forward, but all of these reloads are here and he's going to have to wait for another 15 in-game seconds before he can blink again. And all of the blink stalkers are unable to get away and he calls a GG because those are his last forces. He only has one mining base and not enough money to fuel his production facilities right now. Stefano takes game one of his best of five in this ZVP. And from Chaotic TV, I hope you enjoyed watching it. This was a very high mechanic game. I had a lot of fun casting it. So we'll see you in game two in just a second. Thanks very much for watching, guys. Cheers.